Hey, what is up guys? I have just made some Spider-Man goggles and I am happy to share with you how I did that. I think the way that I have made them is pretty dang easy to do. So I'm going to get into this and show you how I made them. I'm going to show you the layers. So the first layer is a piece of glass that comes with the welding goggles. Next is a piece of white mesh, and I'll get into where that came from. Next is a piece of clear plastic and some black plastic. And with that, that is it. That is all the layers that you'll need for these goggles. So for this, I just got uh, some black plastic from a binder that I bought at Walmart for 88 cents. And I drew on it, I, I traced this uh, glass piece that came with the goggles, and I uh, cut it out, and then I, I drew the shape of the eye lenses on there, and I cut out that shape as well, just looking at some images of uh, Spider-Man from the movie. And with that, I also cut out this crescent shape to put on top so that it would look better because that's how it's supposed to look. There's supposed to be layers to it, like a camera shutter. Anyway, so this piece goes in first. And the next piece that I'll show you is a piece of clear plastic that I uh, got from a remote control helicopter box. So I don't recommend going out and buying one of those just for this, but you can probably find plastic similar to this if you collect action figures or something like that. Just trace the circle, the glass circle again, cut it out, and that's all you have to do. That's the second layer. And then press it flat down so everything's toward the front. Next layer is the white mesh. Now I was having trouble figuring out where to find something like this, but then I had an epiphany. Swimming trunks have this kind of white mesh on the inside. So you can, if you people probably have these lying around, or you can go and buy a really cheap one, and just again, cut out a piece, trace the circle, and you're good. So that's the third layer. The fourth layer is just the piece of glass that's, you know, hard and kind of heavy and that'll push everything flat and flush against the front of the welding goggles and it keeps everything together. And with that you can screw it all back together and there's some rearranging you have to do. You have to use your fingernails and get in and kind of twist this around once all the pieces are in so that it's oriented right. But just loosen it and so you can fit this crescent shape in there and then once you have it in it'll look pretty professional. So it's kind of slanted, so I have to turn it slightly. Alright, and then you just stick the wire back in there. And it's pretty much done. I don't have the piece, the circular piece, so I don't have to put it on there. But I will get into how this is all made. So this is a eighth inch thick wire that I got from a USB cable and this is two Lego pieces that I've kind of modified and then glued on there and I'll show you exactly which pieces those are so you can do the same if you feel like it. So I ran the wire through there after drilling a hole and this these goggles come with a piece that has holes in it so you can thread it through so there's no gluing required. You can just basically tie a knot and they'll stay. All right, so I just want to give you a better idea of how this whole wire thing works because just by looking at it, it'd be kind of hard to tell. So um, this wire is not connected by glue to anything in this goggle. If I can get this off. All right, so I just want to show you that there is an eighth of an inch hole drilled here. It should be up higher, but 
Uh, I drilled it here before looking too closely. Uh, so just a word of warning, uh, probably go a, a little higher than the middle of the goggles if you're going to do this. Um, so it's threaded through that hole and then in through here and out through one of these holes. There's four holes here that the wire can fit through, which is fortunate. And so that goes out and then it comes out that way and then in through that hole. So it's basically just loop, just in, out, and then in. And you can pull on it and the wire is not gonna come out. And another thing I wanted to talk about was that I cut with a Dremel very cleanly, as you can see. I, can, I cut this part off the goggles. There were there was a lot of extra stuff that like you wouldn't see. Maybe it's supposed to go inside the mask. Maybe the goggles are supposed to go on, and then the mask goes over the goggles. But I wasn't thinking about that. I may have shot myself in the foot by doing something irreversible like this. But on the Hot Toys figure, nothing like uh, that is on the goggles, so I cut it off, and I'm planning on gluing these onto the mask. So this edge won't be seen, um, but I just I wanted to get a better shape, a more accurate shape. So I just I just took a Dremel and I let it follow the contour of the goggles because it kind of bends up, and if you just you know press on the Dremel, it'll just go right into the valley there, and it'll just cut all the way to here, and then I cut off the place where the elastic goes into the goggles so and there's no possibility that I can wear these as goggles anymore they're gonna have to be glued but I think if I can end up doing that I think this this will end up working in the interest of being as thorough as possible with explaining how to do this how I did it I'm gonna use sketchbook and kind of recreate what I did in real life with a Dremel and a Lego piece that looks like this. I had two of them because you need two of them for each goggle. The reason I got a piece like this is because I wanted a corner on the top because I'm trying to recreate how it looks in the movie and on the hot toys and all the computer models I've seen online of people doing this. So just get an eraser and imagine that my finger is a Dremel tool. All right, so you end up with a piece like this and you want a flat bottom so it can actually be glued onto the rim of the goggles. So you just sand that down so it looks like that. And then, you know, I sanded the sides because there's things that poke out like that and I wanted it to be completely flat. And so I sanded the sides until I got a pretty smooth face on each face of this figure here and I kind of softened the corner so it's not so jagged anyway so that's essentially the piece that you're going to come out with the sanded edges and the cut edges might not look so black after you're done so you might have to end up using uh, some black acrylic paint and painting it anyway and the next piece I used was a connector peg that has a, a a certain edge or a certain end on this side. They look like these. Uh, if you're familiar with Legos at all, you've probably seen millions of these. And this piece will preferably be black also. Everything black. So that will go there. So it should, in the end, end up looking something along these lines. Use your imagination to make it look better. In fact, I will show you how it ends up looking in the end. So I have that piece and that piece here. So yeah, that's what it ends up looking like. And I also had to trim the end of this one 
so that it doesn't stick so far out of there. Um, but the wire fits in there and it glues onto the rim with super glue fairly well and so it ends up working pretty nicely and I like how it looks. So I hope I've explained this thoroughly enough for you to recreate it. Um, if not, or if you have any more questions, just let me know.